Hello and welcome back. So for today's video, I want to go over some of the uh, major changes that we're making to our car show registration process, as well as the tallying score process, which last year uh, seemed a, a little bit clunky and we ran into some problems. So let's get right into it. Okay, so uh, here we are at the uh, St. Andrew Presbyterian uh, Sunray Car Show website. Uh, and if you saw one of the other two videos that I posted on how to organize a car show, um, you would know that um, we had this website previously uh, with the registration and everything that I'm about to show you. But we've made some significant changes uh, to the back end scripts. Um, for the score tallying, which is what I want to get into. So um, anyway, this is this year's um, show, uh, which uh, you can see there. It's July 28th, 2018. Uh, it's got the, the poster that we're going to print out. Uh, and then over here on the right-hand side, we have our venue map again. Um, but more importantly, over here on the left-hand side, uh, you'll see vehicle registration form. <clears throat> oh, on the right is the vendor, but for now we're going to focus on the vehicle registration form. So if I had a vehicle and I wanted to enter the show, specifically I wanted to pre-register, which would save me $5 because it's $20 for pre-registration, $25 day of show, then I would simply uh, come here, fill out my name, my phone number, my email, any club that I'm affiliated with, uh, and that just tells us uh, whether we need to park those same vehicles uh, next to one another because typically clubs want to be next to one another. Um, and then of course the specifics about your uh, vehicle. And you can see here year, make, model. Now the class as you can see is in red and that simply means that it's uh, read only which means uh, the user of this website, the person putting in the information will not put in their class. And this is one of the changes that we've made uh, from last year. Uh, and we found that even though we had specified on the website right here, antique is from 1900-1964, classic is 65 to 84, and late model 85 uh, all the way up to uh, 2019 for this year. Um, we had that same text last year, but we found that sometimes there was uh, two or three uh, people uh, entrance that uh, put in the year but put in the wrong class uh, and that was a little confusing uh, the day of the show we had to uh, uh, fix that kind of in a hurry. Our fix for this year was simply to make it so that when they put in the year and they go to the next tab the next field it automatically goes and assigns them their class okay so if I change this, 1967 is uh, classic. If I change this to say 1901, changes to antique, and so on and so on. So let's say I have a uh, 2017 uh, Kia, and it goes to late model. Okay. So uh, that's just one minor change that we've made to this particular form. Uh, everything else is pretty much the same. Uh, again, uh, you can go over uh, kind of how this form and these scripts work by going back to one of the other uh, two uh, videos, how to organize a car show. But for the purposes of this video, I mainly wanted to talk about um, some of the major changes. So when a user comes here to fill out this information, what's happening, uh, if it's not clear, is that data is being saved to a database. And then what happens, the day of the show, or actually the, the night before the show, I go into the database and I print out all of those uh, entries. And I give them to our registration booth. From that point, once the uh, actual uh, vehicle comes in the gate uh, and they identify themselves, uh, we can look them up and see if they're pre-registered or if they uh, need to pay, or I should say how much they need to pay. Having them in the system already makes the process a little bit faster for us 
uh, which is what we're after. We, we want to optimize as much as we can so that um, the, everything the day of the show goes off without a hitch. So knowing that, we'll move on to the, uh, the actual scoring or judging process. So we handed out uh, these blank uh, judging forms to each of our judges, and obviously the judge would go through and score them. So uh, you can see here, uh, low score is, is uh, uh, zero, um, and then high score is 10, and they would score the body, the interior, engine compartment, paint, tires, wheels, hubcaps, and then um, some sort of a bonus if they felt the vehicle qualified. From that point, again, this is last year, from that point, um, these sheets would be turned into our tally judges. Now, we had about uh, 46 or 47 vehicles last year, uh, so let's just round it to uh, 50. So we had three judges, so that's approximately 150 of these sheets that our tally judges had to sort through. So not only did our tally judges have to uh, total up the scores, okay, because we don't ask the judges to do that, they also had to categorize them, right? So they have to know... Uh, what class or category that that vehicle was entered in in order to determine our three place winners first second and third and then uh, on top of that determine who the best of show is it was a clunky workflow to say the least there were simply too many uh, of these score sheets for uh, the two tally judges that we had uh, we basically gave them about an hour uh, because uh, we wanted to have the trophy presentation as soon after the judging ended as we could. Um, and in reality, it probably would have taken them two hours uh, to, to get everything right. So for this year, this year we've made some significant changes in that we have added um, a score tally form on the website Okay, so our tally judges will take those same sheets, but instead of having to add them up manually and categorize them, so in other words, putting them in the different piles um, for antique, classic, and late model, they will simply come to this form, select the car or vehicle, and then put in the scores. So again, going back to the, uh, the form here, Realistically, the only identifier on this form for that particular vehicle will be the ID up here in Entrant. And we get that off of our uh, main web page. So when the, um, the person that's uh, pre-registering uh, clicks Send uh, in the background, uh, it randomly selects a vehicle ID and then it uh, emails them that form along with uh, the two directors, which is myself and uh, another guy at the church. So again, um, going back to the tally judges here, they will get the forms and very likely only have the vehicle ID. And so uh, they're going to select the vehicle ID. And you can see here, because the information is already in the database, um, I'm populating or I'm having the, the script populate these fields for me. So we actually know who the owner is and the vehicle rather than the tally um, judges handing me a sheet that says this person won first place in their category and all I have is an ID. Okay, Because when we hand out the trophies, we need to know who that person is. So right about now you might be asking, what about the... Um, vehicles that register the day of the show who don't pre-register any answer to that is uh, fairly simple so we also have a registration form that we hand to our registration booth folks um, and anybody who has not pre-registered uh, they will go ahead and uh, have the participant or entrant fill out that form uh, it's you know just these these fields here and then the next thing that happens is they will take that registration form into our tally judges, so way ahead of the trophy presentation, way ahead of the judging, and the tally judges will actually enter this information into the database the same way that the uh, anybody who had pre-registered would. 
So they would put in their name, phone number, uh, any, any information that we have, but specifically the vehicle information. That puts them in the database, and that gets us back to here. So again, the tally judges will put in the vehicle ID in this drop-down field. It'll tell them who the owner is, who the vehicle is, and then they'll go ahead and score it. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself some low scores here. Put in my initials as the judge and the tally judge, and then click submit. And you can see right here it says um, result success, which is great. That tells me that that score was saved. So now let's assume that all of the scores are in, or the tally judge thinks that all of the scores are in. So I know that we have, or we're going to have, three judges. And if we have uh, more, then I will modify the script, um, what I'm about to show you. So let's go ahead and click on Tabulate. And hopefully you can see this little box that just came up, and it says, we found one or more IDs with, with less than three scores. Continue tabulation. And so at this point, the system is telling the tally judge, hey, you have less than three scores for one or more vehicles. Do you really want to tally them all up? Do you want to score this, um, everything that you have in the system? And of course, uh, the likely response would be, no, I don't want to, in which case you'd hit cancel. It'll go back to the tally form. So, if by chance you wanted to go ahead and click OK, then you can go through here and pretty quickly, uh, just by the uh, the points, you can tell that it's uh, this Chevy Camaro here, this one that I have highlighted, that's uh, the one that doesn't have the three scores in it. So the simple fix would be to go back and enter in another score, or go through the uh, judging sheets, rather, and find the one that you didn't put in, and then go ahead and score that vehicle. And once again, we'll go ahead and just put in my initials because this is just a test anyway. Click Submit. It says Success. And now we should have three scores for every vehicle that's in the system. I will go ahead and hit Tabulate. I did not get an error. So indeed, we do have three scores for every vehicle. And you can see here what we've also done on top of the form that I just showed you. We are now actually tallying up those scores for the tally judges and throwing them into their individual classes. So you can see here, uh, best to show, according to the points, was uh, this Ford 2015 Ford Mustang. And then because this owner is getting best of show, they will not be listed elsewhere. So this is a late model, obviously. And so um, if we didn't have the best of show category or, or, or trophy, then this person would be listed down here as uh, first place. Uh, last year, we gave out uh, best of show, uh, and we did not um, specify that if you won best of show that you could not win first place. In other words, uh, in order to win Best Show last year, you had to win first place in your own category, which meant um, that person received uh, two trophies. Uh, and we got some uh, feedback on that from the uh, participants, and they said they didn't really think that was fair, so we're changing things up uh, this year. Uh, again, the Best of Show will receive that trophy, uh, so the person with the most points will receive the Best of Show trophy. And then the so-called second place winner in that category, in that person's class, will actually get the first place trophy and so on and so on. So again, we'll have three trophies in each category. Antique, 
um, classic and uh, late model and then the one best of show trophy. So hopefully you can tell that uh, with the changes that we've made for this year's uh, show as far as the uh, forms, the uh, process, and the, uh, the back-end scripts, tallying, registration, all of that included, um, it's going to be a much better show, much smoother process. We are super excited about uh, being able to host our third annual car show uh, this year, coming up in July. And uh, again, really feel like uh, the changes that we're making are uh, uh, positive and are going to uh, make it a better show for everyone involved. So, um, thanks again for watching, and as usual, if you like this video or any of our other ones, please like and subscribe.